and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal here with Erin Swenlin each and every Thursday with Chart Wise Women. This is the show where we bring you our wisdom with an eye toward helping improve your trading activity. Erin, how are you this week? How's it going? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's been a busy week, but uh, an exciting one, I have to say, in the market. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yes, yes. We got that nice big move back into technology. And then today, healthcare is getting a nice little bump. And uh, yeah, we're seeing broadening out into financials and elsewhere. I uh, still a little jet lag. Did go on a trip back That's to the right. east coast yeah and uh yeah so i'm uh, you know self-quarantining if you will yes. uh you know with my husband i'll i'll stick close to home until i make sure all is well but it was really beautiful quite lovely back went to rhode island a lot of boat trips and uh etc so uh quite quite nice to get a little change of scenery there yes absolutely and you're you're staying well, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We're we're still, you know, quarantining ourselves away. I was telling my husband I haven't been to the supermarket since this started. Um, I, I can say for me, probably a handful of times. It's just so. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, a little a little stressful. And if you yeah. can avoid it, you're better off. Uh, it's uh, definitely a different world, no doubt about it. So let's go ahead. We have. Speaking of a different world, today, uh, Aaron and I are going to be talking about what uh, we're calling two sides of the coin, and it really has everything to do today about uh, consumer discretionary, and it does relate to uh, food shopping, among other areas, in the sense that we have never seen such a uh, separation between the haves and the have-nots. Really, it's a historical precedent where there are just so many people, unemployment, uh, really suffering financially, and then there are the ultra-wealthy uh, that are much better able to sustain. And there is a nice uh, middle ground there as well. It's not just the good and the bad. So today we are going to be reviewing with you as it relates to consumers and within the U.S., those areas that are really seeing a lot on the upside as far as growth. And I think you'll see very quickly there is uh, two different paths, but they are both seeing very high growth. So that is today's topic. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about our wisdom of the week. And Erin, I'll let you <laughs> go on there. Sure. Mine, mine is that second bullet. And one of the things, and I learned this from Tom Boley when I did the Market Watchers show, but if you can compare what's going on in consumer discretionary, which is like we were saying, maybe some of those high-end goods and shopping, and then compare it to the staple sector, which is generally a value play where you're not going to see a whole lot of movement, but that's where you're uh, I always used to say toothpaste and Tampax. That's where you, <laughs> that's the staples. So you you can make a comparison between the two, and you'll find that staples usually gain strength and rally during those difficult times, where consumer discretionary will a lot of times move down during those times. So if you start to watch that rotation between your luxury and maybe your food staples, your toothpaste and that sort of thing, you can find uh, what's what may or may not be happening in the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I would argue as well that staples are a little bit different in the sense that they're not quite as defensive, given that people are not going to their offices, they are buying a lot more from those supermarkets. But um, yeah, so my wisdom of the week is spotting retail trends, how that really can be critical to your outperformance because these, uh, as consumer spending does account for 71% of US GDP. So it's a big part of the growth. And if you go back historically, every century, look at those top 10 performers over that 10 year period. Uh, from 90s, 80s, uh, 2000s, and so on, a good majority of them are going to be consumer-related stocks. So often a great area to cherry pick for some of these big outperformers. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, 
what I did want to do is go ahead and uh, we'll begin by talking about that luxury side, that area where the ultra wealthy, there's not quite as much concern for uh, the cost, for lack of a better word. So in fact, we're looking at uh, a Ferrari there, a beautiful red Ferrari. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And Erin, we can take turns. Uh, this first one is a chart of Ferrari. The ticker symbol is R-A-C-E. And take a look. Uh, Ferrari came out, I wrote an article early in this recovery period talking about R-A-C-E in the sense that they take their orders uh, individuals prepay for their vehicles, so they have that in their favor. Their vehicles start in price at about 250000 and go up to 450 if you want all the bells and whistles. Uh, so we can see that there is an underlying demand that is continuing to drive this stock higher. One of their more recent announcements with this gap up here, the company is, uh, they do have an SUV vehicle that is being highly anticipated and they expect expect outperformance due to the luxury vehicle market in China. So uh, the stock is in a very confirmed uptrend, finding support at this upward trending. I actually uh, have a five and a 10 day, but more to the point here is finding support at its upward trending, 10 day simple moving average, RSI is positive, and your MACD. D. So race is off to the races and not being negatively impacted. Uh, the company did guide a little bit higher into year end. So that's quite constructive. Yes, absolutely. Uh, one of the ones in that luxury area that I remember you talking about was Pool, P-O-O-L. So I'm going to grab that chart and we can look at a very similar uptrend going on with Pool. Yeah, that's go. all about people. Yeah, of course. Well, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll get into that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So this is, you know, you're looking at people. Uh, honestly, it really, to me, falls in that same area with uh, home builders even. And, um, you know, some of the Home Depot and, and some of these places where people are, you know, hey, I'm going to be living in this house. Uh, a lot more full time than I used to. So they're looking around and they want to fix up things. And if you are in a position to um, building a pool is certainly in that in that space and you can see a really nice uptrend going on. In fact, you, we had a little bit of consolidation here and we broke out this week and it's starting to move higher at this point. So momentum is even starting to shift to the upside. You can see that volume is starting to come in as well. So yeah, oh, this really was, interesting. Mm -hmm. And this was another one of those early winners as it relates to uh, people hunkering down and uh, during this lockdown period and just making sure that their nest and their ability to uh, congregate with their family in their pools uh, while safely distancing. Right. And you can see it didn't lose that much. I mean, it, it did. It went down with the market, but it went down about 32 percent. And since that bear market low, we are up to, oh, my goodness. Uh, let's see here. Let me get it back. It looks like we are up. Oh, yeah. Almost 110 <laughs> percent since yeah. that bear market just, low. Just a little. Yeah, they've so. seen explosive growth. It's been really, uh, in fact, where we were staying in Rhode Island, they were building a luxury pool right next door. So I got a little taste of uh, luckily. Yes. Yeah. And of course, you know, it wouldn't be a talk about luxury items unless we threw Tesla up here, which of course is getting ready for a stock split, uh, if you're not aware. Uh, but it's still, you can see momentum is still flying on it and it's still heading higher despite being very, very overbought. You bet. So automobiles um, and China is a big growth area for Tesla as well. I'm going to go ahead and pull up here a home builder. And this is Hovnanian Enterprises. HOV is the ticker symbol. And uh, I did want to note, so this stock really broke out of this nice lengthy base on very big volume. This was all about new home sales. They are breaking records as far as existing and new home sales. And we can see the big volume here. It's been base building. They're due to report earnings next week. That is of note. But uh, these home builders are really 
a lot of them have been just experiencing explosive growth. So a lot of people wanting to get larger space because they have to uh, stay at home. I had another one, Erin, unless you... Okay, go for it. All right. Yeah. So this is another uh, luxury area that we can take a quick look at. This is HZO, a little bit of a smaller cap stock. I wanted to throw this in there. These, uh, This particular company is a boat and yacht retailer and they have seen again another company that has seen explosive growth uh, but worth pointing out to you because it is pulling back in here uh, the company did come out with very strong earnings but they were uh, not very inclined to guide as far as going forward so that caused this pullback so I did want to point out to you that the growth numbers are still very outstanding for this stock so what you would want to look for as far as a potential downtrend reversal would be a price break back above this 10-day simple moving average and ideally coupled with the uh, reversal of this MACD, similar to this late July period where the black line comes up through the red. But for now, it does appear poised for just a bit more downside, but worth noting uh, because yacht sales are continuing to remain high. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. It looks really uh, quite nice there when you get those pullbacks. So uh, always, always keep those on your watch list. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. Exactly. You'll want to take advantage uh, again for a, a renewal of that uptrend. <laughs> so uh, we can take a very quick break here. When we get back, we are going to view the other side of the coin and talk about some of these discount retailers that are seeing really explosive growth. So we will be right back. And we are back. Aaron and I are now going to share with you some of these names that are in the discount retailer. They are appealing to individuals that not only have reduced income, but also there's an awful lot of uncertainty out there. And there was a recent report that came out that people are spending less on groceries due to the stimulus package not being uh, really anywhere close to getting uh, taken care of. So this first stock here is Big Lots B-I-G and they are a reseller of uh, items at discounted prices. I did want to point out to you this gap up here back at the end of June, management came out and pre-announced that their revenues are explosive. And so the stock did have this gap up, pulled back nicely to this upward trending 50 day simple moving average and more recently has broken out of this space. The company is due to report their numbers tomorrow. But mm -hmm. I did want to also point out in addition to uh, offering discounted food items, they also offer discounted furniture and kitchen uh, wear and so forth. And they this reason for this explosive growth here, all about digital sales. They were able to pivot to digital sales and more recently have offered same day delivery. If you want that couch, uh, <laughs> you, can do, you can do that. So the stock is in a very, very confirmed uptrend. We'll It'll be interesting to see how they report with their numbers tomorrow. RSI, a little overbought here, but positive. And then that MACD trending upward here. So, Erin? All right. I have uh, BJ's whole, Wholesale coming up here. Mm -hmm. And yes, this one's been also in a really nice uptrend. You can see that we're even getting an uh, acceleration of that uptrend as we come through here. Really nice buy signal that I see here on the price momentum oscillator, our momentum measure. A little bit on the overbought side, but honestly, you can see that's not that big of a problem. It'll have to get itself out of that. We ended up with a bit of a pullback, but it stayed positive this whole time. And we've had a really nice run to the upside. Volume has been going the right direction, confirming that uptrend. And of course, its stock charts technical rank has been above 75 now for, well, since uh, we came out of those bear market lows. Yeah, that's been a real winner, and they are very much among those big warehouse-type stores. They're known for their discounting, um, but let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and 
if I may. Yeah. Uh, share with you a stock uh, Dollar Tree and these guys just came out with their numbers today and I wanted to point this out to you because this is a phenomenon if you will that we're seeing as it relates to companies coming out with earnings DLTR this is a daily chart and so the company was really priced for perfection hitting new highs going into today's release they did show a hundred and nine percent in year-over-year -year earnings growth 72 percent above estimates by all uh, metrics of real out performer on their earnings and sales but take a look the stock is dropping 6.6 percent today and the reason is because the company withdrew their guidance for the rest of the year so in other words they are seeing stellar growth Dollar Tree one of the more outstanding uh, discount retailers they do offer food and certainly a lot of other items at uh, a dollar or more uh, but um, markets don't like uncertainty so this fact that they are not being more proactive with guiding even if they said in line or higher would be of course better but they withdrew guidance so the stock is selling off sharply so we'll see if it's able to find support here at this 50-day simple moving average but that's an awful lot of volume today with the RSI just dipping into uh, negative territory hmm yeah um, all right um since we're talking dollars i've got dollar dollar general over mm -hmm. here sure <laughs> here we go uh, let's go on right here so dollar general another one that's looking pretty good and a really nice steady uptrend holding that 50 day right there it's even done pretty well against the 20 day right here but the 50 as we talk about in Wealthwise women that's really the the line in the sand if you will uh, mm -hmm. that's where you really want to see support hold but you can see it was consolidating mostly sideways but ultimately you're still in a rising trend we've accelerated the rising trend and it has pulled back today but that's okay because like I said I like to see a, a sizable pullback and that's what I keep a lot of stocks on my watch list so I can watch for that if you will and uh, I like to see this big pullback here toward that 20 day EMA so you know momentum's going the right way it's not overbought positive RSI has been positive since April uh, as well and and as well as that stock charts technical rank it's still looking pretty good here I guess if I had one complaint I, I'd complain that you know we're trending downward with the on balance volume mm -hmm. versus moving upward and that is considered a negative divergence but it doesn't seem to have really hurt it that much uh, over this time period so no it's it's generally been in a very nice uptrend um, and I'm going to go ahead and share another. This this company is a little bit newer to the game, but uh, it is also another discount retailer. But it does provide discounts for food, and they are seeing a very big growth here. So I did want to point out this is Grocery Outlet G O. I I just took a peek at their website, and they have really well known products at like. 60 70 percent off and uh, they are growing they're opening stores throughout the u.s i think 15 to 20 new stores this year and that is highly unusual particularly during this recessionary period for a company to be expanding and opening new locations what i did want to point out to you here is very similar to dollar tree today this is taking us back to the beginning of august uh, a geo or grocery outlet showed explosive year over year 163 percent year over year growth uh, 82 percent above estimates so by most accounts you would anticipate the stock to continue higher but again they were loath to provide guidance that uncertainty pushed this stock lower to the point where it broke below this 50 day now you can see it's a bit more volatile than the other stocks that we've been sharing with you I'm gonna go down here to this area where you can get uh, Okay, if I could find it, all of the information, but the bigger point is I did want to point out to you that by getting this full quote, you can get a sense that uh, it is a little bit smaller up here. It gives you the certainly the dollar price and other information, but we're looking for that market cap and uh, it is 
billion. So a little bit on the smaller side. So you are gonna get this volatility, but more to the point as it relates to where we are today, I am on the prowl for a turnaround. Today, the stock is up 3%. This RSI is just poised to pierce back up above that net neutral 50 into positive territory. And if we could just marry that with this MAC uh, that a nice positive crossover similar to this June period black line up through the red. Uh, we could see a nice reversal of this near term downtrend, but uh, bearing in mind that it is going to be a little bit choppier of a ride. <laughs> <laughs> that so, is for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, yeah, so I don't know if you have any other discounters that you oh. care to. At this Share point, this. <clears throat> at this point, I have a couple in that that staples area. But I, if you don't mind, I just want to show uh, the how how we can track those two: the staples versus discretionary, because it gives us definitely two sides of a coin. Because you're looking at that more disposable income, if you will, on the discretionary discretionary side, and on the staple side, like I said, that's where you're going to get your toothpaste. So. Uh, I'm going to share the screen and just show you why I think that it's important to see, but also show you that it's not really going the way it usually does. Because as you mentioned, Mary Ellen, mm -hmm. we're finding it coming out of this uh, into this COVID uh, era, if you will, that staples started to become uh, more of a growth area where you were starting to see the that move up. But typically, this is the um, where I compare the two. And generally what you wanna see is a high number here because that means that um, you know, discretionary is leading, it's doing very well. And you can see that typically when you start seeing a, a little bit of a, a downtrend here in this particular um, indicator, that that generally is giving you a hint that there's problems whenever you see that. But look at the difference now, Mary Ellen. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that discretionary moving up. We've flattened a little bit, but here are the price charts for the discretionary and the staples, and you can see that they have both yeah. been you, moving and you higher. can pull up Procter and Gamble PG. That oh, is yeah. one of the bellwether bigger names there, and so just growth all over the place. The, the company, not only among uh, paper products and goods that people need, they're seeing big growth in their cosmetics division. Uh, people need to look good on Zoom. So right. uh, it's really <laughs> been a, a robust area for the company. And then we can't forget uh, alcoholic beverages. Take a look at SAM. Oh, I'm sorry. You pulled oh. up. I can do Costco um, after this. Yeah, so that gap up there, late July, big earnings, and uh, a lot of people drinking their craft beers at home. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, yeah. Drinking our troubles away. Right. And I know with Costco, it's uh, done very well with the Instant Cart, Instacart business and deliveries. Mm. Uh, but interestingly, this one, it, it really surprised me because we really didn't see a whole lot of growth out of it uh, when we did on some of those other stocks that we were looking at. But we are in that spot now and you can see a really solid rising trend. And now today a breakout on Costco, a little bit over um, here. Um, might be concerning if you see a flat PMO, but honestly, it's not a problem because when you have a steady acceleration, your momentum indicators are just going to flatten right out. So uh, at this point, as long as it starts to, to head back up there, I will be pretty happy, but the volume is certainly confirming. Mm. I like that. Yeah, yes. it's looking quite good. That's on my MEM edge list. They came out with uh, same store sales numbers preceding their earnings report and uh, everything looks great. Yep, and I guess one more to look at because they had a good day today. Are they, did they report today? There's, that's an awfully tall bar. <laughs> oh no, they came out with news. They may be in the mix for to purchase uh, TikTok with Microsoft. Might, they might be throwing oh. their, yep, yep, yep. Just another so, one with the hat in the ring. Hmm. You got it, Sorry. you got it. But it's, it's a big enough story, definitely. That's, uh, yeah. Interesting. But yeah, we're finally starting to see it move. But look at, you know, that 50 day moving average has really been holding up uh, as support as well. So I think there were a few hints that maybe um, things it did were going to be better. Just come out with their numbers. Oh, okay. yeah. And not as good as uh, Target. Target 
came out with great numbers. Oh, <laughs> Another just, discount retailer. Just um, curious. <laughs> you bet, you bet. Look at that. Big, right. In fact, uh, historical high. Same for Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Historically high. It's just really an amazing period that we're in. But uh, yeah. I'm uh, thinking <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've covered it all here. So let's go ahead and, and move on to, yeah, that happened. And this is where we try and tie in the theme of today's show with global headlines. And Erin, you came up with this concept because we're in a period where there is a shortage of coins. We talked yes. about the uh, both sides of the coin. There's actually a shortage out there and it's hitting some retailers, uh, laundromats and even the tooth fairy this particular uh, cbs story talked about a child that wrote a note and told the tooth fairy she would not be against receiving dollar bills <laughs> <laughs> so, i don't know i thought kids were getting uh, more than a quarter these days with I, uh, inflation <laughs> i agree totally yeah that was definitely a different <laughs> that was definitely <laughs> unusual to think that someone would get a, a mere coin for their precious tooth um but yeah so why don't do you mind taking a look i uh I um, don't mean to land this on you, but gold. We can oh, of course. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't call myself a gold bug, but I certainly <laughs> follow it every single day in my decision point alert mm -hmm. and the gold miners as well. So I'll give you just a quick peek at both of those. Uh, gold right now certainly has been enjoying quite the move up. Now, this is the contract. So this is as of yesterday. I'm going to throw in GLD here. And you can see that it's been quite the wild run today. Um, but ultimately, it's still holding on to support. It's holding on to that 50-day moving average. We needed a pullback. Uh, it is still on a declining trend. We haven't broken out of that declining trend, even with today's uh, spike on that OHLC bar. But you can see momentum is starting to fade here. The good thing is, is I follow the discount and premium on the physical gold trust. It's a closed ended fund. So depending on what the net asset value and the price it's sold for, you can see if it's been, um, if it's at a discount or a premium. And as long as we have discounts, honestly, that means that investors are still somewhat bearish on gold. And of course, sentiment being contrarian, hmm, move it on up to the upside. Yeah, I'll just and I guess quickly do gold miners because I know we're sure. running low. Mm -hmm. Gold miners has been a place I've been watching. I actually do own a gold miner currently, and we are on a rising trend. We haven't lost that. The 50 day is holding up. Uh, I'm looking for this rising trend that just started back up here again to continue. So I'm waiting for a breakout above that, you know, get it out of that declining trend, just like we looked at with gold. Very good. Yeah, it's interesting, and I know it's all tied in the dollars. Uh, interest rates are starting to pick up, so we're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of movement in that area. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Well, the I dollar. am. <laughs> the dollar, not good. I, I, it's just not breaking out of the declining trends. It's in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's not. Despite looking... this, look at we have rising momentum, and it still can't get itself going. <laughs> right. DOA, as they say, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think we have time for one more chart. I'm going to share this one uh, with mention of the Tooth Fairy. I just couldn't help uh, but pull this one up. This is Align Technologies, A-L-G-N. For those of you not familiar, they provide the, uh, instead of braces, you get these clear mouth guards that uh, move your teeth into perfection. And hard to think that something that is this discretionary would be holding up well. I would argue it's, uh, you know, that Zoom concept again. Right. <laughs> we all want white, straight smiles. Uh, but let's take a look. This is a daily uh, chart, ALGN. We can see that the stock did hit a new high here, but pulled back very orderly. I like this up to this upward trending 50 day simple moving average. So we are having another nice break above these shorter term simple moving averages. The RSI is trending upward. Uh, not a lot in the way of volume. That would really make this interesting, but overall very nice looking chart. We are going to leave it at that. Uh, Aaron, till next week and everyone Indeed. viewing, have a great weekend. Take Happy care. Trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. 
If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.